I'm Liam. I'm Wayne. You're listening to In Film We Trust YouTube. A place where we post clips from our recent episode. All links down below in the description. And now, on with the show. Ah! Prana said the same thing about, you try banning these things, people are just going to work harder to get hold of them. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much, if you try to push things underground, there's going to be, people are going to try and find them. They're going to want well, to, well, to well, seek Well, what out. happens is it creates a community, doesn't it? Say this is one movie, you've seen it. It creates a community of, he, these are the people who have seen this one movie. And it just expands and expands. And eventually these things kind of go mainstream because you can't keep them hidden forever. And, and it ends with a creepy smile, isn't it? Yeah, it's going kind to of focus like a close-up on this weird smile that she does. It's just weird. And it ejects a videotape which says sense. Sense, so, yeah, the videotape comes out. I loved watching that, like the videotapes going in and out. Very, very nostalgic. Are you a bit of a VHS junkie? Are you? I, like, I like VHS tapes. Again, it would be a pain if you had to use them all the time now, but... But yeah, the sense tape comes out and the film ends. Did you like... What I appreciated with this film is on the last act, I liked how it actually let itself become a little flamboyant it wasn't reserved to the end but that kind of that's kind of in line with enid how she went from being oh, this yeah. very reserved character to being kind of i don't want to say spread her wings but being again she is more flamboyant she's a lot more open and out there just yeah, but, like the film because what you can find with well this horrible term that's now put on these types of films is elevated horror elevated horror well like basically horrors with pretentious horror you could say horror with pretensions of art pretensions of art yeah i mean you can attach we've said this before you know you can attach meaning to to anything if you want to well i did like how this film wasn't just tension 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 and ambiguity it actually allowed itself in the third act to let itself go a bit and become a little flamboyant it did let itself go a little crazy but again which i appreciated yeah i did as well but it, that's not to say the rest of the film was dull and under, no, no. Pl under underplayed or anything it's a film it's not very long it's about hour 25 minutes 120 so. i think 125 were credits yeah Somewhere it's very like short but it's very good at always keeping you guessing and keeping things building because it brings in lots of things it brings in the sister it brings in the amnesiac killer and then it brings in the director and the producer and stuff so well e everything in this film is there to facilitate Enid's psychological state. It is. Everything is there to push her towards basically where she inevitably ends up going. I loved this film. I thought it was great. I Had you heard of this film before? Yeah, I heard of it when it was... Because I think it was on... Was it on the Fright Fest circuit? In the, where I came across it. Sundance. Sundance, Sundance was, Film Festival. I Fest, think so. It won this, there was this one European award. I can't remember its name, but it's. I think it was an award for like a best like, European horror movie or something like that. But it won that award. I heard about it through... Uh, a YouTuber who did his best 10 movies of the year and that was in it. So was Pig, actually. I think we've got some good choices there. Yes, some good choices. So, no, I really loved this film. Um, I loved pretty much everything about it. It's a great central performance. I loved being able to look into the video nasty era because it is a fascinating era of motion pictures, I think. Which is a much maligned period because I'll, there's a lot of great films in there. There is a lot of... Because the problem is a lot of them were kind of lumped together. I mean, even The Exorcist was released extensively cut at one point, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it? because I think that was largely because the head of the BBFC absolutely hated the film, so that's why it was never released in that See, that's what See, that, that's the problem with these commissions. It ends up just becoming like a subjective opinion. I mean, and the movie does point that out, because, yeah. again, because one censor watches a thing like, oh, we should cut that, another person's like, oh, why would you cut that? It's not a big deal. So, yeah, it does come down to opinion. There are this other movie. Did you ever see a film called Scum? It's with uh, uh, Ray Winston. Ray Winston, yeah. yeah. It's set in a borstal. I love that film. It was great. And that was, it was not a nasty, but it was seized because it was, I guess, depicting juvenile crime. Is it, or it was depicting a side of Britain that the higher ups didn't want the they didn't, public they didn't, to see? They didn't want to know what because it was like. Because this, this can't be going on in our country. Exactly. exactly. It, can't be going on in, it can't be going on in Borstal's. But uh, yeah, I loved I loved the cinematography as well. Like we spoke about how it's grainy, the aspect ratio changing. And it's not even a naturalistic lighting, is it? As we said, it, it's got this jalo flavour to it. There's a lot of unnatural lighting to very, the film. Like, very contrasting colours. Yeah. Also, when your office is, everything looks really smoky. Because yeah. obviously folk would smoke in buildings at times, so everything looked very, very smoky. But yeah, this would make a great double feature with Barbarian. It would. It? I, I would re recommend watching yeah, both of those. Like, not necessarily back-to-back, -back, but yeah, around about the same time, because they both, they both delve into kind of the background of movies. 